Ah! This looks like a long video. Well, it is because I get passionate during it, and passion is the essence of life. Or something. I heard Antonio Banderas say it somewhere. Look, if you're subscribed to NCIX Tech Tips, you're about to see a rare beast on this channel. An Apple product. <laughs> Specifically, the new MacBook that launched back in March 2015. It quickly gained a lot of attention for a number of reasons. Firstly, because it was a new Apple product. And secondly, because it had Force Touch, a single USB Type-C port, and it was thinner than the MacBook Air. So how revolutionary was it, really? Will it stand up to a ruthless showdown against a Windows Ultrabook with similar specs? Well, that's a... That's what this video is, so, I mean, you gotta watch it. Okay, look, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys before we really dig into this. I did own a MacBook back when they were made of white plastic, and I do still have a fondness for OS X and Macs. They are generally beautiful machines that run their software very well, and truly getting to use this for this video was actually kind of nice. It was nostalgic. For the record, I can appreciate why some people crave their simplistic, user-friendly software and clean, minimalist design despite the high price. So, with everything I'm about to say in this video about how this machine is kind of pointless, keep that in mind. Before you, you see the 2015 Apple MacBook, as we've established, as well as an Asus ZenBook UX305F. There are quite a few different variations of Asus thin form factor ZenBook, but this one is particularly useful for this video because it has almost identical specs to the MacBook. So let's go over those right now. Both machines have a fifth generation Intel Core M processor with two cores and four threads. The ZenBook's chip is actually just one step below the MacBooks in Intel's lineup. Actually, Asus just updated the UX305 with Skylake processors, so while the one I have uses Broadwell, new ones will have sixth gen CPU, so that's nice. Both use onboard Intel HD Graphics 5300, no discrete GPU, 8 gigabytes of LPDDR3 SD RAM, and 256 gigs of solid state storage, although the MacBooks is PCIe based, so expect it to run a little faster. Both laptops also support Bluetooth 4.0 and 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. That's how they're similar, let's talk about the differences. The MacBook's display is slightly smaller at 11 inches with a resolution of 2304 by 1440, that is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and an IPS panel. The ZenBook's 13.3 inch display is also IPS, but with a 1920 by 1080 resolution. However, the ZenBook has a 720p camera and what I think is a secondary sensor of some sort that enables enables you to use Windows 10's Hello feature so you can sign in with your face, while the MacBook's FaceTime camera is only 480p. Looking at the ports, here's where things get really interesting. The new MacBook has a grand total of two ports, a 3.5mm headphone jack on the right side and a USB Type-C port on the left that does support USB 3.1 though, so you can do all sorts of crazy things with it, from charging to data transfer to running external displays, but you will need to buy a number of adapters to do those things, which of course, Apple sells for perfectly reasonable prices. <laughs> that was a joke. The ZenBook, on the other hand, has seven ports, micro HDMI, full-size SD card reader, dedicated charging port, headphone jack, and three USB 3.0 ports, one of which features what Asus calls Charger Plus. It can charge your phone 50% faster than a regular USB port, even when the machine is asleep or turned off, so that's kind of cool. So, why the disastrously low number of ports on the MacBook? Well, supposedly, Apple's reasoning is that they wanted the device to be as thin as physically possible. Yeah. See, the thing is, the MacBook is 1.31 centimeters at its thickest point, and the ZenBook is 1.23 centimeters. It's actually thinner by 0.08 millimeters, even though it sort of appears to be thicker uh, thanks to the MacBook's gently domed top. So, basically now we have a laptop with only one port because Apple thought it looked pretty. Now, the ZenBook is slightly larger than the MacBook and heavier at 2.6 pounds to the latter's 2 pounds, but that's probably partly due to its larger battery, a 45 watt hour unit compared to the 39.7 watt hours in the Apple device. And I've got to say, the standby time on the ZenBook is amazing. I used to write part of a script, closed it, and put it in my backpack for like five days. I opened it up, it was at 88%. What? 
And having used other Apple devices, I know they usually have great standby time, and the MacBook did admirably as well. But it lost more power after a day and a half of not using it than the MacBook lost in almost a week of not using it. So, just saying. All right, now to round up the physical summaries of the devices, we've got a few extra features that bear mentioning in the MacBook. First up, it's got a force touch trackpad. It's Apple's pressure sensitive tech that's also in the Apple Watch and the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. It allows you to use some more contextual actions by clicking and then pressing some more until it clicks again. How useful this is is really up to the software, but in using the stock apps on the MacBook, I really didn't find that it helped much at all. It is pretty cool to see Apple coming up with a new feature like this though, and it would be even cooler to see some software that innovatively uses it. 